I applied for 157. Rentals? Yes. I did not get one. Hard-working Australians... I have hit this line. There is nothing else I can do. Doing it tough. I'm the only one of my adult friends who doesn't own a home. Coming up on 60 Minutes. Demand has never been so great. The supply has never been so little. The housing crisis is worse than ever. It's pathetic. It can't happen. We have to change. But this man... Welcome to Australia's first full-scale 3D printed house. It's actually quite mesmerising to watch. ..says he can fix it. He's sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> That's next on 60 Minutes. To keep up with the overwhelming demand, the federal government says in the next five years, 1.2 million new homes need to be built. If you do the maths, that's approximately 650 houses or apartments being completed each and every day from now until mid-2029. It's a task so mammoth, many say the government's dreaming. But as more and more hard-working Australians become more and more desperate for a roof over their head, the need for new thinking becomes even more urgent. So come on in, welcome to Australia's first full-scale 3D printed house. Nick Holden is on to something pretty extraordinary. He's building a home like never before and watching it is as magical as it is methodical. So by the end of the day, how tall will this wall be? So look, we'll be up another 1,200 millimetres, so the wall is a metre at the moment, so we'll be over two metres high. And it just keeps going? It just keeps going. It doesn't look or sound like an ordinary construction site, because it isn't. There's not a brick or tradie in sight. And it'll hold. It's a concrete house, so yeah, this will be around for the next 100 years. Only engineers, material scientists and software experts who are constructing this Marvel project. Yeah. It's actually quite mesmerising to watch, isn't it? It's really cool. It is like the consistency of toothpaste, you know, but it's, uh, it holds its form. Even though it's wet, it's what we call rheology. It'll hold its shape even when you apply pressure on top. It's almost like a soft serve. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a cone. In all seriousness, this technology could give aspiring homeowners battling a tough housing market hope. Nick thinks his 3D homes could provide a quick and affordable solution. I believe 3D printing can be a major factor in, uh, in going towards solving the supply and the housing crisis issue. We will turn this duplex around from starting to print to completion, ready to move in in 12 weeks. So the mantra there is we're turning what would be a 12-month project into a 12-week project. Three months and your home's finished? Three months and we're done. Cost, how much will it be? Well, at the moment, we, we are seeing about a 25% reduction in the overall build cost. That 25% saving could make all the difference for single mum, Anna Wythes. What else would you like with your veggie stew tonight, guys? Mm, carrots. Carrots? I'll have fish. All right, well, how about we do both? She's worked hard to secure a rental property for her young family in the Blue Mountains, an hour west of Sydney. But what Anna is really desperate for is to own her own home. As an assistant principal, she earns a decent wage but, like many Australians, is repeatedly being priced out of the housing market. That's not right. No, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right when you do work so hard. I am working mighty hard to try to achieve this goal, but I have hit this line. There is nothing else I can do. Anna has done all the right things. It's been hard, but she's managed to save a 15% deposit. But even that still won't get her mortgage approval. So I've got a couple of things going against me. The fact that I am a single mum, the fact I have two dependent children. My deposit is there, but I'm not at the 20% um, for the mortgage insurance. So it, it's really difficult. The hard thing is, I think, for everyone to accept is that you just, 
you have a goal and yeah. you achieve it and you yeah. just want to do right for your kids, That's right? That's it. What would it mean to you to be able to take them to your own home? Yeah. It's that sense of belonging. I think as a family I love to share things with them and they know that... Um, they, they know that owning a home, my own home, has been a huge dream for me. And they see it now and they hear me say, well, we can't. I'm sorry, guys, we have to be in a rental property and we have to put up with these, um, with issues that we deal with um, within that and maintenance issues and things like that. And, um, yeah, they, they kind of see that as well. Hmm. It's a pride thing. Oh, completely. I'm the only one of my adult friends who doesn't own a home. And it makes it difficult. You've got a feel for people like Anna, but the reality is there are thousands of renters out there in the same position. With the average mortgage, now eight times a person's salary, owning a home has become out of reach for many Australians. Which brings us to another problem. House prices are too high in Australia. US economic commentator Harry Dent says it's a worldwide issue that's been years in the making. The greatest boom in history was from 1983 to 2007. Natural boom. All since 2008, all the stock markets since then around the world, and especially in the United States, it's all been totally artificial, totally funded by stimulus, which is not sustainable and is basically just not good. Now, having that much stimulus in the economy is like taking a powerful drug. It cannot work out well. You gotta detox it at some point. That's what this is, a worldwide detox of debt and real estate and asset, financial asset bubble. For Australia, Harry has grim news. He warns house prices will plummet. If you buy a house now, I am predicting you could lose as much as 50% give or take in the coming years. Are you truly saying that people's homes are going to fall by 50%, half the amount they're worth today? US already fell Average home, 34% in the, in the last downturn and 50% and for upscale homes. This, and people said that couldn't happen, okay? This is a bigger bubble. When is this, this crash going to happen? I think it's gonna start in the second half of 2024 in the US and spread. I think the US is gonna start a recession that spreads around the world because this is a global phenomenon, especially the real estate bubble, it's everywhere. It's not just impacting those trying to buy a home. Developers are suffering too. And that has a terrible flow-on effect because housing stock in Australia is so low. Just ask one of our country's most successful builders, Harry Triggerboff. You have the nickname High Rise Harry. Do you like that nickname? Well, that's the right name. But it took me many years to become High Rise. I was always the low rise because I had no money, so I was low rise. When I had enough money, I became high. <laughs> if anyone knows the construction industry, it's the Meriton boss. Harry started his empire 60 years ago, but says trying to do business these days is harder than ever because there are too many rules and regulations. The impact on developers and builders right now, how are they faring out there? They're going broke all the time. You can see it. <laughs> it's a funny situation. The demand has never been so great. The supply has never been so little. And yet they all go broke. If I was today 25, I wouldn't start building. I constantly fight with the councils. They change rules. They don't understand what they are doing. They don't care. And that's it. And you, you, very little you can do about it. I don't think it's a good industry to enter. Doesn't that break your heart, Mr Triggerboff? It's pathetic. It can't happen. We have to change it. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the Meriton kingmaker still thinks everyone should enter the housing market if they can. I think it's good for them to buy if they can. But, again, 
Don't take debt which you can't service. It's very important to think of the debt. It's not an option for so many people, though, to even think about taking on the debt. Oh, well, that's right. So I saw in the beginning already that the real problem was that people had no money. So I thought, well, I better get the money. So you lend people to buy I your own apartment. I still give people money. And I have no bad debts. But if you ask the other Harry back in the US, it's a dilemma made even more complicated in Australia because houses are in such short supply. For a young person, I mean, my advice is very simple. If you have not bought your first home yet, do not. And for those who do have a home, if they can, Harry reckons they should sell now at the top of the market. If you sell now, you're going to be ahead of the crowd. And then when things go down, you're going to be able to buy at least twice the home for the same price and mortgage. That's the bonus. And when those buyers come looking, Nick Holden will be ready to sell them a 3D printed home. Coming up. OK, you're right to walk the plank, I Tiffany. sure am, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow, look at this. The incredible progress of this revolutionary build. Uh, lounge room and sort of a small dining table here. In the small country town of Abermain, two hours north of Sydney, you'd think securing a home wouldn't be so hard. But for mum of three, Caitlin Bailey, applying for rental properties was a big waste of time. A struggle her mum, Karen, couldn't stand to watch. How many houses did you apply for? I mm. applied for 157. 157 rentals? Properties. Yes. And you just never got one? Just never, ever got one. Are you a bad tenant? No, I really am not. I keep the house clean, always paid bills, and never had a problem. God, what made you keep going? Just sheer determination of, I don't want to be homeless with all my kids. And yeah, I just can't bear to do that. Yet after another rental rejection, Karen knew she had to step in to help house her daughter and grandchildren. I don't know. It's just, I feel for my kids. Um, I've tried to do the best for them with what I've had. Um, and I just hate them seeing them going through this because I hate seeing them upset. Karen took the extraordinary step of taking out another loan and accessing her super early to buy a portable home for her daughter. $138,000 later, this van home is sitting in her backyard. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Wow, look at this. Yes. Home sweet home. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? At 58 square metres, it's yes. not very big. And this would be the kids' bedroom. It's quite large. But there yes. are two bedrooms, a bathroom, lounge, and a fully functional kitchen. Man! Man! It's not Come where Caitlin you. thought she'd end up. But the radical solution does have its upsides. This is so fun, Ellie. Yeah. Do you like it? It takes one big happy family to a whole new level, doesn't it? <sighs> yeah, we can support each other even more than we have before, so it really does help yeah. all of us. When we want to get, have a get together, we don't have to worry about drinking because we don't have to drive <laughs> home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the future, isn't it? This intergenerational living. Families. Pack to the rafters. Now families are coming back together because of necessity. We all have to survive at the end of the day and it's very, very hard these days. Newly appointed Housing Minister Claire O'Neill has a tough job to help people like Caitlin and Karen. I mean, really, is that as good as it gets? Well, absolutely not. And as Housing Minister, I don't think that's good enough. Her challenge is to execute the government's ambitious goal to build 1.2 million homes in the next five years. Have you inherited Mission Impossible? 
no, I don't accept that. And I certainly wouldn't have taken on this job if I believed there was nothing I could do about this problem. What we've got in our country at the moment is a crisis in our housing market. Um, homes aren't affordable. We don't have enough of them. And the situation for renters in particular is really dire. What are you going to do differently with the portfolio to help Australians quickly? Because it's clear that people are suffering. So it's a really important point. It's a long-term target of us building ambitiously 1.2 million homes for Australians, but also making sure that we help people manage that really significant housing crisis that's affecting them today. The critics would say that that is going to fall short by 20%. That's 240,000 homes. I can tell you that if we set low ambitions, we are never going to see the kind of change that Australians need and deserve in this area. The builders have gone bust. There's a skills shortage, so you don't have people in the workforce. What do you do? How do you suddenly make that happen? Look, the, the honest truth is that it's not going to be easy. Even if more homes are built, those trying to get into the housing market have Buckley's chance of doing so without a little help. 40% of first home buyers are relying on their parents. How long is the bank of mum and dad going to last? I'm really worried about that because I think that's um, possibly an all right solution for you if you've got lots of housing wealth in your family. But there are lots of Australians whose parents don't own their own home. And we can't have an Australia where your experience of housing in our country and your ability to generate wealth in our country depends on how many houses your parents might own. These mums and dads are giving on average $92,000 to their kids. I mean, if you don't have access to that, what hope do you have to save that these days? It's a really huge problem and I think it's a symptom of a broader breakdown in our housing market in Australia if you've got young people who are having to borrow those types of sums from their parents. Proposed legislation designed to fix the housing shortage is stuck in the Senate. One of the government's plans is to lure foreign investors to Australia to build units and rent them out. This is something that you see very commonly overseas. So in the United States, for example, somewhere in the order of 12% of residential investment is through this particular vehicle. Now, what we're confident of is that if we are able to make this happen, then we will build more homes for Australians. Shouldn't we fix our own construction industry before inviting foreign investors to come in? So um, a, a lot of what the government is doing is going to provide a good stream of income for Australian construction firms because we are trying to build more homes. I'm seeing builders take up the challenge here and start to think about new ways that they may be able to help us with that target. And 3D printing is one of them. It's been eight weeks since my first visit to Nick Holden's construction site, and the progress is remarkable. So here we are walking down from the entry. We're coming into the kitchen, uh, lounge room, and sort of a small dining table here. It just feels so big. It's huge, four metre high ceilings, very airy. So we've got a really cool VR setup where you can walk through the finished house. I'll put that on your head. He gives us a sneak peek of what his technology-based build will look like when it's finished next month. Look at this place. Yeah. This really is like building a home in the future. It's impressive to see, and this is just the beginning. Nick has an almighty plan to rehouse Australia. Why can't we scale up to print 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 houses a year? I mean, that's just mathematics. You know, housing should be a basic human right. Hello, I'm Dimity Clancy. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.